In the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38, it says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Now, there are some people out here that are using that verse, along with a few other verses in the New Testament, to suggest that after you believe in Jesus Christ, you must then add something to your belief, which is the act of baptism. And this false doctrine called baptismal regeneration is what I am gonna show you today in this video. I'm gonna give you three reasons why baptism does not save you. Coming up. Hey my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you want a free ebook, click the link in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing, hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. So as I said before, there are some people that are promoting this false doctrine called baptismal regeneration. And this is the idea that after you place your faith in Jesus Christ, you have the responsibility to go and add something to your faith and you must be baptized. And if you're not baptized, then you have not completed your regeneration. And as a result, you would not be saved. My friend, this is a false doctrine because anytime you try to add anything to the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will taint and contaminate the gospel. Let me give you an example here. Right here, I've got some pure water. Now, right now, this water is completely pure, and I would drink it, and it is so good. It is so pure. But if I were to add some hot sauce, some pepper, and all sorts of dirt and sand and stuff like that, I would not want to drink this because this would not be pure anymore. In the same way, when you try to add something to the gospel, you are contaminating the gospel. So here are three reasons why baptism cannot save you. Reason number one is because the Bible clearly teaches that salvation is by grace through faith alone. One of the most dangerous ways that you can interpret the scriptures is to find a couple of verses that are unclear and obscure and try to build an entire belief system and an entire theology on those verses. One of the key principles that I actually teach in my course on Bible study made easy, how to study the Bible is always let the clear interpret the unclear. In other words, if there are some verses that you're not sure what they mean and they sound like they're a little bit difficult to understand, always look and see what the rest of the Bible has to say about that topic on clear verses and let those clear verses interpret or help you understand the verses that are not clear. So here are several verses that I'm gonna read for you about how we can be saved. It says here in John 3, 36, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life for God's wrath remains on them. So I want you to notice how many times Jesus simply says, if you want to have faith, simply believe and that's it. John 5, 24. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and what? Believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Now, that's just a couple of verses in John. You could also look at John 3, 15 and 16, John 3, 18, John 6 and 40, also John 6 and 47. But here are several more verses as well. In the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 31, the jailer called for light, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He says, hey, what do I need to do so that I can experience salvation? Notice their response. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Romans chapter four, verse five. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. Paul is saying, you don't have to do any work. There's nothing you need to do beyond placing your faith in Jesus Christ that is going to get you into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, not faith plus works, not faith plus baptism. And this is not from yourselves, meaning there's nothing you can do. It is a gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Galatians 2.16 is the last one I'm going to read. Know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith 
in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. Now, I know that during this time, Baptism was not part of the Old Testament law, but the point that Paul is trying to make here is that there is no work that you and I can do and need to do apart from placing our faith in Jesus Christ that is going to get us into heaven. The second reason I want to suggest that baptism does not save you is the word baptize in the New Testament can mean and refer to different things. Sometimes certain words are used in different ways. So if I said calculus and you're a math teacher, you would know that that is a a subject that you have to take uh, in college or in high school. But if you're a dentist, you would be thinking of calculus as uh, something that's on your teeth or whatnot. So different words are used in different ways depending upon the context. New Testament scholar James Montgomery Boyce says this concerning the use of the word baptize or baptism in the New Testament. Testament. Now, this is going to get a little deep, but just stay with me. It's going to make a lot of sense. He says, when used in the New Testament, this word more often refers to our union and identification with Christ than to our water baptism. Now, let me give you an example of where the word baptized does not refer to water baptism. Baptism. Notice it says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 2, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. Now, Paul is referencing uh, the Israelites, the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, whenever they were in the wilderness and Moses was leading them in the wilderness out of Egypt into the promised land. And notice what he says. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now, is this saying that they actually went through water baptism in the wilderness? Or does it refer to them identifying with Moses as their leader, placing their faith in Moses, who was God's deliverer to deliver them out of Egyptian bondage? It is talking more about their union and their association and their faith and their connection with Moses and not water baptism. Now, Dr. Thomas Constable, a Dallas Theological Seminary professor, comments on this verse and says this, Baptism is the outward expression of the believer's identification with the object of his or her faith. Cross-reference Romans 6.3, Galatians 3.27. Consequently, Paul could say the Israelites were, quote, baptized into Moses even though they did not undergo literal water baptism in the name of Moses by following him and submitting to his authority They expressed their identification with him. So my friend, the word baptized, depending upon the context, does not always refer to a literal water baptism. In many contexts, it refers simply to us identifying or associating ourselves with the object of our faith. And I believe that is what uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 38 is saying. He's saying, hey, uh, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Identify your union in Jesus Christ is what leads to the remission or the forgiveness of your sins. Now, this third one's going to get a little deep, so I'm just warning you. The third reason is that the Greek construction of this verse is very clear that it is not referring to you having to do something or be baptized for or to receive the forgiveness of your sins. Now, once again, it's going to get a little deep, but we're going to do a little bit a little lesson here in Greek. In Greek, they have a couple of different prepositions that they could use. The first preposition is the preposition hina or H I N A, and that is typically used whenever an author wants to suggest the word that or in order that. So, uh, if they used hina here, it would say repent and be baptized in order to receive the forgiveness or remission of your sins. But that is not the preposition that is used here. The preposition that is used here in the Greek is the preposition ice or E-I-S. And this word is more translated for uh, or in reference to. Now, you may say, wait a second, it still sounds like you have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. But let me give you some examples. Let's say I said that a child is being punished for their disobedience. 
That is easily understood as the child is being punished as a result of or because of their disobedience, not the fact that their punishment leads them to be disobedient, right? Let me give you another example. Let's say I said that a woman is being praised for her beauty. The, she's not being praised and as a result of her praise that makes her beautiful. No, she is being praised as a result of or because she is beautiful. And so in the same way here, it could easily be interpreted as repent and be baptized, not to receive or not for or to re receive the forgiveness of your sins, but because of the forgiveness of your sins, therefore you should be baptized as a natural byproduct of your salvation. So here's the last thing I'll say on this. Baptism is a command, but it is not a requirement for salvation. In other words, if you are living your life and if you've, you've never been baptized, you're living in disobedience, particularly if you've had an, an opportunity to be baptized, because anytime Jesus gives us a clear command in scripture that we need to do something, if we don't do it, we're living in disobedience. But my point here is this, there's a lot of clear commands that Jesus gave us that we oftentimes do not fulfill. An example of that would be, Jesus clearly said that we should make disciples. There are some Christians that will go their entire Christian life and never make one disciple. But does that mean that because they have disobeyed that one command from Christ that they're not gonna to go to heaven? Jesus also said that we should forgive our brothers and sisters or our enemies 70 times seven. But there are some people that go through their entire life with bitterness and anger, resentment and unforgiveness, and they never apply that uh, command to forgive. Does that mean that that person does not go to heaven? No, it just means that they're living in disobedience. So in the same way, even though the Bible is clear that baptism is a command from God, you can still go to heaven if you, for whatever reason, fail to be baptized as long as you place your faith in Jesus Christ. However, please understand that if you don't get baptized, you are living in complete and total dis disobedience to the clear command of Jesus Christ. So I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? Does baptism save you? Is this something that we have to do after we get saved? Leave it in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time on The Beat.